Hello everybody, this is Danilo from PeacefulAnarchism.com out here in nature once again surrounded by the beautiful spontaneous order that we all live amongst. So today I want to discuss the idea put forth by certain status that says anarchy, your anarchy, your voluntarist society would not work on a large scale because how would you tear down the corporations? How would you engineer large cities and densely populated areas? It may work on a, on a small scale if everyone's nice but you can't guarantee everyone to be nice <laughs> so therefore it won't work now this is an interesting idea because it rests upon the foundation that volunteerism depends on people being angels and whilst I do put forth the argument that most people understand basic morality and most people do have a conscience and operate according to that conscience and raise their kids to be moral agents. I also understand that there's a certain negligible, insignificant minority of the population that does not have a moral compass or a conscience and we would call those people sociopaths and psychopaths and megalomaniacs. And the most destructive thing you can do is to give them an institution of power. So, you know, it's the old meme, um, people are bad, so we should institute a government which is composed of people that are bad. <laughs> and the circle goes round and round. So that's one aspect. The second aspect is... I oftentimes avoid these arguments or I avoid these rabbit holes, these hypotheticals, these tangents where I have to describe in elaborate detail how intricate situations might occur <laughs> in a quote-unquote voluntarist society because I don't think it's necessary to prove that. Because voluntarists are not fortune tellers. We're not oracles or soothsayers. We cannot predict the future for the same reason that abolitionists did not advocate the abolition of chattel slavery on the grounds of predicting the future. Their proposition was that it is immoral to own another human being and therefore the institution of chattel slavery must be abolished. And in the very same way, abolitionists of the present time, known as voluntarists, advocate the very same thing, that it is immoral for any politician or bureaucrat or government agency to claim authority over peaceful, consensual, individuals trading amongst each other so this this idea that we have to know how large scale societies would work in order to first you know in order for other people to accept voluntarism is ridiculous and this is exactly why i tell people focus on yourself i don't know what billions of people will do tomorrow. I don't know how they're going to act. I can't control how they're going to act, nor should I be able to control how they're going to act. All that I can reasonably control is me. I can't control my wife. <laughs> I can't control my kids. But I can control myself. And so when I talk to somebody about these principles, I don't want to talk about how society will be engineered because I'm not a central planner. 
It's not my society. I'm not a dictator. <laughs> it's exactly why I am an anarchist and a voluntarist. It's not my society. All I'm saying is that I don't think anyone has a right to rule me, anyone has authority over me or the fruits of my labor, and I must advocate the exact same level of freedom for my neighbor. And so whoever I'm talking to, the first thing to establish is what are your moral principles? What is your conscience? Do you have a conscience? What do you consider to be right or wrong? That is what's most important. Forget about billions of other people. We'll get to them. <laughs> we can make a change one mind at a time. This is how any meaningful, significant change always occurs. By influencing minds of individuals one mind at a time. I forget who said the quote, but um, change has always occurred via the actions of a passionate small group of people, passionate and dedicated small group of people. That is always how change and progress occurs. So it is not necessary, it is completely irrelevant to predict how society will be structured without the state. It does not matter. It's fun to contemplate, to speculate. There are many books written on how a stateless society might work, how roads might function, how utilities might function, <laughs> how garbage disposal might function. But it's fundamentally irrelevant. And the real crux of the problem, <laughs> I think most volunteers would admit, is not how would the garbage be picked up or how would the roads be built and maintained absent the state. That's not the primary reason why people become anarchists and voluntarists in my experience. The primary reason people become anarchists is because they see the heinous evil that is perpetrated by agents of the state acting in the name of the state. That is why people become anarchists, because they see drone bombings, they see wars, indefinite detentions, they see invasions of villages of innocent men, women, and children. They see counterfeiting. They see the caging of peaceful individuals for smoking a plant. That's why people become anarchists and voluntarists. It is out of a base of love for humanity. It is not because we know how a large-scale society will function without the state. That is irrelevant and insignificant. It is a byproduct. First, let's end the, all of the evil that arises out of statism and the belief in authority. This is the immediate problem at hand. Everything else is circumstantial. So I implore you all to focus on the moral aspect and improve how you speak to people because if people are comfortable with us if they trust us, they will listen to what we have to say. So convey your message with kindness, with love, with gentleness and compassion. Okay? I don't think people are fundamentally evil. I think we mo most of us do have good intentions, but good intentions, as history has proven, can be disastrous. Thank you very much for listening. This is Danilo from PeacefulAnarchism.com. Enjoy the beautiful nature.